So when I was seven years old, my dad took me and my brother to go fishing. And I'll never forget it. It was in Oklahoma. The lake was nice and clear. It was like a cold morning we had this morning. And we're there in the boat. My dad pulls out the styrofoam cup. It's got all this mud in it. And he says, Brian, I want you to reach in there and grab a worm and put it on the hook. Now I'm thinking to myself, uh, not much for worm murder. And I wasn't the kind of guy that liked to get my nails, you know, messy at that time. I was a fan of many buddies doing a, a rib service. So fishing and camping wasn't my big thing anyway. So he looks at me and he's like, Brian, I can see that you're not super excited about this. Let's do this. For one dollar, all day long, I will put the worm on the hook for you. Now, my eyes lit up and I'm thinking to myself, this sounds like a good deal. I've got a couple of bucks in my pocket. So I hand him the $1 bill. And sure enough, all day long, concierge worm experience. It was awesome. <laughs> and it was amazing. I was in a contest with my brother for fish. I was crushing it. It seems like every time my dad gave me the, the rod with the, the worm on it, there was already a fish on it as well. I don't know how I was so good at fishing, but I was. So later on that night, after a meal of fish and spam, we're playing some kind of, my dad turns to me and he says, Brian, you made a really good decision today. And I was like, what is that, man? He said, well, if you can learn this one life lesson, your life will be easy. And that is, outsource the things that you don't know how to do and the things you don't like to do. How many people in here like it when their technology breaks and they got to spend hours and hours fixing their technology, right? He loves it. <laughs> and that is why I started the business business, which is basically concierge IT. Now, when it comes to IT, as you guys all know, you've had experiences, you've had problems, and those problems and those experiences are going to get harder, which means at some point in your life, whether it's at your home or with your business, you will partner with a business like mine, which means, did you go back to this? Wait, sorry. So you're controlling it, Anna. All right, which means I am inevitable. <laughs> So you will at some point partner with a, with a company like mine. So let me tell you a little bit about me. Uh, like I said, my name is Brian Stauffer. I'm the owner. I have some issues with this. I'm the owner of Eric's to go. So I bought this franchise actually out of COVID. Uh, the story goes is I was in radio for about 19 years or about 29 years. Uh, that career over a period of time sort of scaled off, not only financially for me, but I watched the entire industry not adapt to technology. And after that, I figured, okay, my second life, my second world, I'm gonna build a business that I fundamentally know is gonna be different today than it was a year ago. And that has absolutely happened. So that's why I got into this game. Plus, I wanted something that I knew would go to people because I fundamentally understand that going to where your technology lives is one of the most important things. So what is Nerds to Go? We're basically mobile IT. This was amazing on my own. Uh, it's basically, we are a mobile IT department and we go where the technology lives. Now why is that important? It's because for you to pack it up and bring it to us, a lot of times we can't even solve the problem if you do it that way. So for us to go to you is really the, 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 what we're trying to do here. So we really have two businesses. And that is we have a residential business, which is which is similar to like a Geek Squad model. Now their model is we're trying to push you in a new partner because they sell it, whereas our model is really to try to fix it for a new spot. Um, and so here's sort of a, a landscape of if you can go ahead and advance it, thank you. Uh, so with the break fix side, we fix the work where your technology lives. Uh, we can train you and help you with your devices. And this is a, this is a, a thing that more and more people are utilizing as their technology is getting more sophisticated. Uh, but we also customize your electronic performances. As you might know, computers are kind of like cars. You know? uh, if you have a four-cylinder and you're running it like a V8, you're going to melt your motherboard. And a lot of people don't know that your technology really needs to be uh, customized the way you're working you're a heavy gamer, you're going to need a different rig than if you're just doing email and Google. Uh, from the business side, we want to replace an expensive employee. On average here in Asheville, an IT guy will make between a person will make between seventy-five to one hundred thousand dollars a year. They'll take vacation. They won't leave Melissa alone. So you have to deal with HR. All the problems with it with a person, and if they do their job well, they're not going to have a lot to do. So we're replacing that expensive employee. Uh, we're providing cybersecurity. If we do have a war, I think it's going to start with cybersecurity. If you haven't already known that, I'm already in a war. And that is with your data, especially if you're a small business. And we also customize workplace productivity. How many here have multiple generations in a workplace? Right? How do you communicate? If you have a younger generation that likes text messaging, you've got an older generation that likes phone calls, someone likes emails in between, and then you have customers with multiple generations. How do you communicate with your customers? 
customers. We're going to help you with that. But really, we're also a hardware and vendor man. You buy all your products through us, we manage all your products through us, but because we're a big network, we're able to get deals on vendor products and bring that value to you as your IT dealer. Go ahead, go next here. So how do I make revenue? Uh, I have three ways that I make revenue in my business right now. The first way is, to go ahead and advance it, uh, is residence, residential break fix. Go ahead and advance it there. Um, and so we do that through a couple of ways. One is through service contracts. This is where we're basically making a commitment to be your IT person. And you have that relationship. As part of our service, you're gonna have a technician that you know, that you can text and you can reach out to. You're gonna know the name of your person. And that's really important to us to have that relationship with a resident. Because we're in your house, right? We're there, we're helping to protect you as well. So you wanna trust that person. Uh, we do service calls. The nice thing about service calls is you can call me right now, I can book the appointment, be up there at two o'clock, and that money gets my bank account at the end of the day. So that's one of my revenue screens. And then we do a product called Nerdistore for Residents. This is a cybersecurity product that's yearly. And we install it, and then every year we have license updates on that. Then we have business. And this is small business, medium business IT. We have service contracts with them, service calls, and then we have what's called Nerdistore for Business. This is a monthly service where we're in your IT department. And that price really depends on the size of your business. So, for example, I have a hair studio that we do by T4. They have three employees. They're paying 200 bucks a month. Uh, we have another employee that's 15 to 20 employees. Those folks are going to be a little bit more. So the nice thing is our IT department does really scale with your business as well. So you don't have a big, big cost if you're just getting started. And then the third way I, I bring revenue is my store. We're located at 900 Hendersonville Road, right across from Biltmore Forest. Um, we're literally in the center. And that was by design. Logistically, I can push up anywhere uh, from that spot. So that's kind of nice. But you can bring stuff to me, and we can break it. We can do it in the store. We do most of our data transfers. And then if you want to buy a computer, you can come to us. We can customize that purchase for you. And then when you get it, we'll get it uh, data transferred. And so you're going to leave that computer just like your old one. Everything you have on it. So those are our three revenue streams. Go ahead, next slide. So here's me, my little radio career. Uh, this is what I come from. There's me and my ex. She was very, very adamant about us never, ever, ever getting back together. Uh, there's me doing some stage work with, uh, with Chris Allen uh, from American Idol. There's me jumping off of a perfectly good building. How did I know that? Because there was no fires and the elevator work going up. So, and then there's me on the billboard there. But the reason I bring this up, go ahead and dance, is because I come from a marketing background. Basically, my whole career was built on building audiences somebody else's audience that they monetize for millions of dollars, but still that was my guess. So this is what I'm doing now in the market. I have a show called The Nerd Lab. It's a show about everything. It's an interview style show. If you come on, you're the nerd, and whatever it is for you, right? I'm Boston and Brian. If you're a real estate <coughs> nerd, it's been on the show. She is a real estate nerd. I'm also on Nashville Biz Radio, so I'll pull the audio from that, and then it feeds over Nashville Biz Radio every Tuesday at 1 p.m., and then they roll my episodes continually. And then paid advertisement, I do Google My Business, pay-per-clicks, and then I do a lot of fun stuff with Facebook and Instagram and uh, LinkedIn. So here are my current challenges, brand awareness. Uh, ironically, I went through a brand redo in my first year, which I kind of knew um, when, the, uh, when I bought the business, it was a little bit older, and it just got bought by a new company, and I knew they were going to do a brand refresh. So I'm still pushing out my logo. People do know who I am. But brand awareness is with only being open a year and a half uh, is something we're still working on. Uh, proactive solutions. People call us when stuff doesn't go right. We want them to call us beforehand. Uh, we can save you a lot of money if I come in right now and do a small business IT audit or a medium sized business IT audit. We can save you a lot of money. Uh, most people wait until they either have the attack or they wait until nothing works and then they call us out of frustration. And then at that point, it's like, okay, we can do it because we're right. So we really want people to look at proactive solutions, especially cybersecurity. If you guys aren't thinking cybersecurity, you will get used. No matter how smart you think you are, these people are smarter, and they're getting smarter and more, more uh, so, you know, secure in what they're doing. The other thing is, with small businesses, because we're customized, everyone's different, it really does take us a long time to customize and do this IT architecture uh, for a business. And sometimes when we then present a quote, they go shot us. So the value that we have of all the, you know, going out to their place, we had like a five uh, business hotel, we went to all five locations, we did all this audit form, really took us about 10 to 12 hours, and then they took our quote and shopped it. 
So that's one of our frustrations because how do we get these guys to partner with us before we put in all this sort of free work that they can take somewhere else? So that's that is one of our current challenges right now. And now it's time for giveaways. <laughs> so I guess I got to ask some trivia questions here. Uh, what year did I start radio? There she is. <laughs> All right, and finally, what is one way that I make revenue? Uh, business partnerships to either local IT person. Perfect. Looks like we got a partner there. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. We need an earth. Call her to go. I'm right <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, fantastic. Um, also, um, he's got coupons as yeah. well. So, if, you want to, if you guys do want a free business audit, come up to me. We can schedule that right now. And we'll bring our. I got my lead tech, uh, Sean. He's an awesome guy. If some of you have worked with him here. Uh, but yeah, we'll bring him over and we'll just give you an analysis of what's going on in your business. If anything, we leave you with this really fun report with a lot of charts. <laughs> okay, all right. So it's question and answer time now. I'm going to say what I always say this is not a cocktail. It's an ice cream cone, okay? So get it right in your face so we can hear you, so we can get it on the, on the video and everybody else can enjoy it as well. So who's got a question? Awesome. Great, great presentation, thanks for coming and visiting. And quick question for you, there's a, so this is a busy field, right? There's sure. Actually in the market, there's a lot of people who are doing IT, uh, managed IT, flat right. IT. Tell me about the decision you made to Franchise. What does the franchise offer you over and above what everybody else offers? 100 Nerd Network. I mean, really, I have so many resources, not only from a vendor management point of view, but if we have a problem we've never seen before, I have so many people I can reach out to. Uh, we're owned by Propel Brands. Propel Brands was Fast Science. They were able to scale out to 800 locations nationwide. So having a corporate network that you can kind of tap into is really awesome, especially for pricing. So like our firewall pricing right now, we get enterprise price. Like we get it as wholesale because we're with a bigger network. Whereas if we were just like a, our own shop, we would never get those relationships. Thank you. You bet. Good to meet you. Um, could you? <laughs> thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Presentation. Um, could you say a little more about? So th thanks for the franchise question. Could you say a little more about your workforce? What does that look like? Yeah, that's great. I have two technicians right now, uh, Sean and Spencer. Uh, they're both 27 years old with 26 years of experience. Uh, Sean literally we took, took our microwaves when he was two years old. Uh, he went through the military route. And really, this is one of my passions is really to help mentor that generation. Because I see this sort of disconnect, not only financially, but also in the workforce. And Sean's a good example. Here he is. He grew up in the just kind of north of Weaverville here, did grow up with a lot of money, very intelligent, went to college, could afford it, so he had to drop out, went to the military, um, did IT for the Air Force actually, or went to, and did IT for the Navy after that. Went and worked at GF Linamar as a junior associate. They hired him for like $12 an hour. After a year, they fired his manager and put him in charge of this entire network. It's like a 1,500 unit network. He's in charge of the whole thing, he's like a 22 year old. Finally, after a year and a half, he goes to him and asks for a raise, and they say no because he didn't have a college education. Oh. Yeah, exactly. So I go before I have paint on the wall, and I say, "You want to build this with me?" And he's like, "Heck yeah, I do." And this guy is amazing, and he's, you know, he's crushing it for me. Both my techs have been with me over a year now, which is really our culture because I'm trying to build a culture that people want to come and work with. And now I actually have an interview today. I've had two people reach out and want to work with me, and that's nice. That's a good feeling when you're doing a lot of networking. Feedback is, hey, we wouldn't have team up with you. So, but these guys are, and then with Nerdisher, or excuse me, Nerds to Go, we have what's called Nerd University. So they're constantly going through uh, updates. They have their certifications. Uh, Sean's working on his pen test certification right now, which is pretty sophisticated, if you know what that means. And it's just great to see these guys. They're always interested in technology. I mean, that's all we do all day is talk technology, and then they go home and do it again. <laughs> so it's nice to have a workforce that really loves what they do. What is the split? And by the way, nice presentation. Interesting. Appreciate this. Uh, what, what is the split between business, resident, and retail? And if you could grow one of them fast, which one would you grow fast? Yeah, and that's a great question. Um, 
So what's interesting, and I mentioned it with uh, residential, like I said, I could get a call right now for residential and have that money in the bank by the end of the day, right? It's not recurring though. So if on residential products after a year, we pretty much realize that most customers will use this twice or about on average twice a year. So that's why we try to get into a service contract because it's just a better rate. And there's no expire, so if you do go another year, we're not going to dig you for that. But the B2B side is subscriptions monthly, right? At this rate, the B2B is about 20% of the business. The break fix is about 80. I'd love to flip that, right? I want that B2B market to come in every month and know every month that these are these are our business customers and that revenue is coming in no matter what. Now, you know, you'll have people cancel and we'll add some more too, but the goal is to get that B2B business to carry the carry the weight of the revenue and then grow everything else around. That with tanks and trucks at that point. And that's what I'm trying to do now because inventory are, are people, right? And so if I don't have them sold out, I don't even know what that looks like. <laughs> you know, and I, I always tell them this, I'm gonna try to redline you if I can, which puts a lot of pressure on the technician, but then you can't do too much because if they're too stressed, they might have issues in the field. So it really is a sort of balance, but the goal then would be to get the B2B up so we can, you know, know what we're to expect every month and forecast for. Anyone on this side over here? <laughs> what, uh, we yeah. went across the aisle. <laughs> okay, all right. Hey, Brian, great presentation. And uh, thank you. Also, have a show on Biz Radio. Welcome to the. Family. Oh, cool. So, I just wanted to ask since you have the um, Nerd Lab um, on a more on a larger platform, what decide, what made you decide to bring that onto the local network here? Um. Well, a couple of reasons. One, Matt and Tim and I have very similar backgrounds and radio PTSD, so we sort of bonded over our experiences. And, and when I met him, I just really was sort of, I just think he's a great person and a great, you know, he's a, if he becomes a fan of yours, that just helps. And so he did, I did my very first interview with him before I went to my store. And so then I started doing advertising with his radio and just got a lot of good feedback from that. And then after doing the Nerd Lab, he approached me and said, would I be interested in just pulling the audio and putting it on a show? And it's just an easy fit because I could do it. Um, and also his distribution helps. Because he pushes out to Spotify and Apple, so then I don't have to do it. So if, for me, I'm almost paying for another distribution channel to get that content out. Um, I did a, if you don't know, I did a smart series recently with the Chamber about social media and networking, just because I was really good at networking when I did radio. And the combination of that with this business has really helped me excel. I, I would say that 60% of my business came through what I've been doing on Facebook, and it was free. It's just pushing content out. So. Can't wait to get on the show. Let's do it. Oh. I can uh, really empathize with your problem of uh, investing you know, eight to ten hours on a quote and, and then they kind of shop around and that's eight to ten hours you're not getting paid. Um, have you thought about like building like a milestone system? So for example, you know, they give some small amount and then you know ten ten percent normal contract, you you're able to give them a bit of an audit to show uh, some value that you have, and then you kind of move them along, kind of a system like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, so the small business audit that we now do, at first we try to charge for it because we do pay for this service every month. But I found that this, because we went from doing it ourselves to a, to a program, to a process okay. now. And once we pay for that process, it just, it really cut down our time. So we can give them the report, we know what's going on, and then we leave it up to them. I mean, the bottom line is, Depending, like some of our build outs right now, one of them is you know 15 grand up front. Yeah. So if you're a small business having to front, you know, front that money, you know, that can be all right. You know, all right, we gotta do it. Here we go. And so I understand the reluctance, but in some cases, I feel like kicking tires for this kind of business. It's it's more of a relationship anyway, you know. And so for you to nickel and dime it at that point, it's like, listen, you're you're gonna save so much money going with me anyway. You know, even like what we do is we'll go in and go through your audit. A lot of times people have ever done licenses. So you're paying for 365, you don't know it. So those sorts of things is really where we can give you a cost savings because we're going to look at everything and go, oh, by the way, uh, you know, your accountant is paying for a CRM, $100 a month. You know, what do you do? Where is this? And so that's where we can be a real value in that small business audit, plus cybersecurity. And I, you know, even on this presentation, I'm like, well, do I hit up over the head with cybersecurity? Because you, you should also be terrified. Really, because I am. I mean, I have my whole life locked down because of my this world. So, it's getting that message out, but in a way to where you're not freaking everybody out, 
But really, you should all be freaked out. <laughs> you bet. Who's feeling freaked out right now? Yeah, right? I do. Let's try Alright. Alright. So I'm curious, so are you hiring? What are the requirements to get hired? And if you can say, like, what is the pay rate for your technicians? So I paid really well. Uh, that was on purpose. Uh, I actually paid about $8 more than the network average. Now, some of that's actual too, let's be honest. Uh, cost of living here is one of the highest in the state. Um, I have, so this is what's interesting. Um, because I'm hiring technicians, it's almost like a football team a little bit, where you get, like Sean, my lead IT, he's the quarterback. You know, Spencer, my he's my tight end, right? And Spencer can't do things Sean can do, and Sean can't do things Spencer can do. And so they really need each other as a team. So when bringing someone in, it's, what, what do we need? You know, really what I need is someone to sell, right? But it's hard to get somebody with tech experience who loves technology that wants to go, you know, cold call. So it really is sort of this, all right, because Sean shouldn't be selling, right? He's an amazing technician, but his, you know, presence is very, where nerds to go, right? So it is a matter of, like I have an interview today, I want to see what their experience is and if I can fit them somewhere on the team. Because what I do need to expand, because what I'm terrified of is that I'm going to get a lot of business at once. And if that happens, I need to have other resources quickly that I can get to in order to do that. Now I can't do 1099 and I have like four IT 1099 guys. When I opened the business, I had a guy that was my competitor tell me we're friends in business. I never heard that before. So him and I have done projects together. He's a one-man shop. And I got another guy in Weaverville that's a one-man shop that we're exchanging uh, services for. So what's kind of fun, and then I, I have had a meeting with TSA Choice. So what's kind of fun about the IT business or marketing in this town is everybody really does work together. Um, and so finding good technicians, I'm just hoping that I create the culture that not only would they want to come work there, but they would be a great fit for our team. So. Uh, okay, so just that curious, so I'm running a little Silicon Valley School here, and I have students that are actually looking for jobs. And so, like, if you're hiring, do you, you have actual certification requirements, you know, your experience? Right? Yeah, so we have two, so we have a thing called Nerd University that they go through. And that is a certification that we provide as a franchise that includes a lot of like the county guy stuff and all that, some of the basic stuff. Um, as per, like, you know, Sean's working on his pin test. I mean, I don't need that. What I need to know is can you do the work, right? Because a lot of what we do is in field. So if you're in the field and you have a, you know, customer over your shoulder and they're looking at you while you're on the computer trying to fix your outlet problem, can you do it? I don't care if you have a certification. What I care about is can you do it? And so what's interesting is when I, when I bring somebody on, I actually integrate them with the other nerds very quickly because they're gonna assess very fast whether or not this person is telling the truth or not, right? <laughs> you, you can't be as an IT guy, it's just, you just can't. And so when we bring somebody in, if they have, because a lot of people have certifications but then they lapse. And I don't care, I mean, clearly took the test. <laughs> you know, so. Sir, what is this biz radio that you keep talking yeah, right. about? And how can I, as a listener, <laughs> tune in to your show? It's on bizradio.us, uh, and I am Tuesdays at one o'clock. Uh, and then it also, I have a bunch of episodes on there that run all the time. Uh, by the way, with the Nerd Lab, I do film that in my store. If you guys are interested in being on the show, uh, it's a thirty-minute interview show. Like I said, it gives a lot of value that you can push out to your network as well. Um, it, you know, produce, but what's nice is we stream it on Facebook, put it up on YouTube, and then it goes, goes on uh, uh, National Biz Radio as well. So it's a real value for you uh, if you don't do a lot of interviews and that sort of thing. So. And I've done like, I think I did my 65th episode yesterday. Wow. Yeah. We launched April 1st, no joke, 100 shows in 100 days, not in second. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Any other questions? I have a yeah. Nerd Lab? Yes. Sure. So, do you do that with Alex? What's that? Do you do that show with Alex? By uh, well, Alex has a show called. Is it called? I think I was on your show. 
No, it's just like Poppy said that a couple months ago, and I never got the thing, so I'm going to have to find that. Because that's what's going to be my selfish question is how do I get on your show to sell my product? Yeah, so the way it works is basically um, I'll send you an email. You can schedule yourself through my signature page, and then I send you like a little guest form to fill out. And whatever works for you. I'll scour yeah. your website today. Yeah, I'll give you I think part. I was on it. I was like, I never got the thing. I'm you might have been on Alex's. Alex was on my show um, and a couple weeks ago, and then uh, I did his show. Like, I think that was it. Had to be that. When you, you start talking, I recognize your voice. So yeah. I think that was it. <laughs> awesome. yeah. I have one follow-up question also. So selfishly, this is a selfish question. I have a business. I operate in six states, and I have employees in Southern California. Can your guys help them with IT things? Yeah, I mean, so remote wise for us, it's not one of our models just because it's very difficult to, um, when you don't have the, you know, like for a residential literature, we actually put a monitoring tool on the device. If they do call on a remote session, we can do that. Okay. Now we could do that, but if it's hardware or anything like that, it just wouldn't be viable for you. You would be better off finding some sort of local. And I'm local, so I gotta find second. Yeah, but I can so. hear the <laughs> We, the thing about here too, we do go, I think because we're nerds to go, we go over to Maggie Valley quite a bit, we've done work on the Tryon, uh, we got a project in Morganton we're doing right now, so, you know, we, we can expand around the Western North Carolina. Uh, again, great presentation, and following up on Amy's question, just one, what is your service area locally? Second question is, for a company that uses a lot of uh, vendor platforms in the cloud, whether it's CRM is file based or um, where else QuickBooks Online, those kind of things. How much is there that, that a, a local business can do to protect themselves from a cybersecurity standpoint when their platforms they're using are you know, operated by national companies that are paying against it? Yeah, so you know, we have what's called a billman attack. So if you don't have a firewall and use QuickBooks, you can have somebody get in between you and what you're processing out. I'll give you a good story. I don't know if it's a good story, but it had to do with real estate. A uh, real estate attorney was dollars and they had somebody in their system do a middleman attack. So they were able to catch the ACH payment. And it was a four hundred thousand dollar mistake. And that was because they didn't have a firewall. I mean, uh, you know, a fifty dollar a month product would have saved their saved them four hundred thousand dollars. Right now, I was in a seminar the other day where it was at cybersecurity at Montreal College and they were talking about how only seventeen percent of businesses yeah. in this town are secure. Which means that they're coming for you. You should be terrified. I mean, I, you think I'm joking about that, but you really should. I mean, I literally have, I mean, I have my password right here. <laughs> like, you know, you have to kill me to get my passwords. <laughs> right? So, and that's because I know what's going on. And I also know what's going on globally. You know, I mean, read the news. China's got hack farms. India's got hack farms. Russia's got hack farms. I mean, they are coming after our businesses. And residents, they're coming after our old, our, our our parents. So you need to be locked in. Can I help? All right, I have a question. What is your liability? Like, people pay for your service. You kind of outsource those other services that you license, etc. So if somebody gets hacked, they lose four hundred thousand dollars. What is your liability? So we have a couple of one when you sign on with us. Clearly, we have that. Really awesome contract that says if you do something that's not our fault. Um, our biggest problem is you, right? Is the is you get an email and you think it's from your boss and he's telling you to send this check to a vendor because someone hacked your vendor list. Now, if we're already on top of that, somebody getting your vendor list is going to be very difficult. But the way that they're reverse engineering and figuring out, like they're social engineering, dude. they're literally watching everything and sending emails from your boss and they can't even figure out how he talks if they do it wrong. So, we give you a lot of training to say, don't click on stupid. That's what we say, don't click on stupid. And if you think it's stupid, send it to us. Just send it to us. But if we, we'll do our job right, but the training and getting the people inside the organization not to mess stuff up. The other side of this is employees. We had a situation where uh, one of our top customers um, called us after they fired an employee, and the employee went back to his office and started deleting them. So, I mean, it's those sort of things too that you gotta watch out for the people inside the organization. I was in a business yesterday who they had no admin tiers on their CRM, which means all their employees could get access to their bank accounts. So it's like, what? <laughs> you know? and, and I feel like what, what's happening a lot is 
we go into businesses that are so insecure. I mean, it's crazy how it's like literally just leaving your doors open all the time. And when we share, share with them why they need to lock this down, they're like, ah, I don't have anything happen. I'm like, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you drive on the wrong side of the road, you're going to get hit, right? It's just a matter of time. That's a good analogy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, got time for another question or two, if anybody has one. Uh, if not, there's more to the program, so don't worry about that. Thank you so much, sir.